Hi everyone, Rob here and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about using storyboards to help guide your development work when you're building an online learning course or module. I frequently ask a lot of my uh, educational technology students to build pi uh, pilot modules and I guide them through the same processes that we would use in an actual instructional development project. And the first thing that I always ask them to start with is a storyboard. So what I'm going to show you quickly is a sample storyboard that I have used on an actual course development project and then quickly show you what that looks like when translated into an actual LMS and show you how useful the process can be. So let's quickly first take a look at a sample of a storyboard. I have one ready to go here and I simply use Excel to build this. I start off with one tab in my Excel spreadsheet for a table for each module or each section of my course. So in this case you can see that I have one for my front matter or my home page of the course. I have ones for week 2, week 3, all the way up in this case to week 13 of the course. On my front matter tab I have everything that, you, uh, that a student is going to see when you land on the landing page of the course. This one is going to be built in Moodle, so there's a lot more on the landing page than if I were to say build it in Canvas or in Brightspace D2L, which uh, have sort of a bit of a different interface from Moodle. So I have this section here grayed out. We won't pay attention to that. That is what the course used to look like before I did some redevelopment work on it. And this column here is my updated script for that page. You can see that I have some placeholders in here for pictures. I have all the text that's going to go under each heading and all of my menu options. It uh, looks a little bit overwhelming at first, but if we were to take a, a look at what this actually looks like in Moodle, well, here's the actual course homepage. So you can see there's that picture that I referred to in the first row, and here's that script that was on there. So when I got into Moodle and started building the actual course inside of the learning management system, by the time I, I got there, it was simply a matter of copy pasting this text uh, into the LMS and I had my placeholders here. I would go through a process of copy pasting all the text in, saving it all out until I was happy with the layout. Then I'd go back and find all of these placeholders and insert the pictures. And you can see that I have clear designations here of what the pictures are going to be so it's easy to put it in. If we take a look at week one to give you a sense of uh, what things look like in a little more detail when we dive into an actual weekly module with a lot of content. Again, this is all of the intro text here on this week one tab that goes on the course homepage because Moodle lays out um, sections on that home page for each of your weekly modules instead of having a side menu where you pick for each of those. So this is my uh, week. This is the uh, title or topic for the week. I have my main objectives here and the reason I list them out at this point is so that I or another instructional designer can see exactly what it is that we're planning for this module. This helps us during the building stage. Um, assessments that I'm going to have as part of this I would include in here as well. The activities. You can see that I have uh, some time estimates here of approximately how long these are going to take. It's important to put these in in your storyboard. It's good to have a good sense of how much you're asking your students to do. You want to make sure you have just the right amount, not too much, not too little for the type of course that you're planning on building. And by doing it this way, you can quickly see if you have the right amount, if you need to add more, or if you need to cut some out. And here's my homepage intro script. And these resources, these are any of the links that I would need on that homepage to resources that are part of week one. Looking back at Moodle again to see what this looks like, I can scroll on down here to find week one. So you can see I just copy pasted in all the text and here's everything that I had listed under that resources tab that I said that I needed to build. Coming back to my blueprint again here, I have my week one Moodle book. Uh, Moodle uses this thing called the book that lets you organize your topical content into easy to flip through pages. So on this tab, I have one tab for the book and then I have one row for each page in the book. 
I have my chapter title because I can subdivide the book into uh, smaller chapters, my title for the page, there's the text script that would go on each page, and then I have a column for any media and resources that need to go on the page. So if we look here at this second page, you can see I have embedded video listed. And I do have a placeholder here, watch the following video, and that's where I would put that video. Here's the actual APA format reference for that. Good to collect these now because you are going to want to have a proper references list in your course available for your students. And any clients that you're working with as you're building the course are also going to want to have that information collated um, as, as part of the review process for the course to make sure they're getting quality material and as part of the accreditation process when it comes time to doing a course review or a program review. Uh, looking at another row here, again, you can see I have another page, another title, another script. I have an image on this page and I have a... Uh, an indication here of the name or the caption that's going to go on that and the actual file name. The reason I put this in, it makes it easier for me if I'm doing the building to find that image later or if I'm handing this blueprint off to another instructional developer, they know exactly what image is going to go in where that placeholder is. And I have all of this laid out so that I can put the text in first, come back and put in all this media later. So let's take a quick look now at Module 1 at that Moodle book and see how this all plays out. So if we come back to my script, you can see my title is Getting Started with Instructional Systems Design. And here's my learning outcomes. That's my text script. I come back into Moodle. That's all I've copy pasted in. I go back to row 2. This is my page title, what is ISD, I have my text here, my embedded video, and my resource. So if I come back in and click next in my Moodle book, you can see that I have everything listed here, all the text is pasted in, and I've got that video embedded in. And then if I were to go to uh, my uh, course resources list at the end of the course, you'll find that APA reference is listed there for easy access for students. So again, it's a lot of work to put together one of these blueprints at the beginning, but it's a really important process because it helps you visualize exactly what your online learning course is going to look like. It helps you script everything out and, uh, and plan everything out. Make sure that you're hitting all of the key learning objectives that you need to for the course. It's easy for you to share this information with another technical builder if you're going to pass it off to, off to a web services team or an instructional designer to build this for you. And it's easy for anyone to review this. Make quick changes to your script before you start building without having to go back and fix all of the stuff that you built. It really can be a quick process once you have this blueprint and you get into the LMS. And if you've got this done beforehand, you're going to avoid that dreaded problem of scope creep where you start getting into the learning management system, start building and come up with all kinds of great ideas and think, hey, I should add this in, I should add that in. And it ends up getting out of hand for you. You never get the project done or you end up putting in far too much for students to be able to handle in the amount of time that the course is designed for. So really, I spent a lot of time putting this blueprint together, uh, exchanging it with my colleagues and my clients before I got into Moodle and started building it. When I started building it, it was just a matter of a few days work, copy pasting stuff in, going back, finding that media and putting it in and sticking to the script. No changes were made at this point once we got into the script uh, and building it in the learning management system. Now, as I often do for my students with uh, this type of project, I wouldn't expect them to build out a full 13-week course. I'd expect them to build out the front matter, what it's going to look like when students land in their course for this type of project, and build out just one module. So if I were to submit this for a, an assignment of this type, I would have this front matter tab, I would have my week one text here, and I would have my week one Moodle book. That's what I'd pass in for this sort of assignment. And that's what I would actually pass off to my clients during the first few weeks of development of a course, just so that we could pilot the first bits and come back and make any tweaks on a smaller low stakes scale before we built out and designed the rest of the weekly modules. 
you don't want to go through a whole 13 weeks worth of course development only to find out you've got to change the same sort of thing in every single week you want to pilot that with just a week or two's worth get everyone used to the look or feel fix the layout issues that you want and then go back script everything out go back into your learning management system and just build without worrying about what it is that you need to script